I've met some people who I know that handle things that honestly, I, I do know some people that I really admire the way they handle confrontation or an issue, an argument or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, like Chris Starman's one. Chris Starman, at the end of the conversation, whether you're fighting and arguing and bickering, whatever, you know exactly what his stance is or what he was thinking and feeling and why he was saying it. He will it. have communicated his, he will know it. So that's uh, refreshing. That's why I love that, man. <laughs> he's, he's, he's amazing. Good. He's amazing. Like, I mean, even when he's like feeling upset, he'll just be like, you know, I'm just, I'm j he just says, you know, I'm just feeling upset or I don't want to go out to stand up tonight because I just, I think I need a, a day off from it rather than people telling these little white lies. And I was notorious for that. You know, like, oh, my dog got out. Uh, I can't make it. All right, and a five, four, three, two, one. And this is Shot 30 Podcast, and I am Shane Newbert, and we have a guest who we've waited for a long time. I have no idea where we'll end up at the end of this episode, but we have a very special guest. I've known this guy for years. It took me a handful of years before I could even, like, before we even talked. And, and well, it took me a minute because I didn't know, I didn't even know if you knew how to talk. You're always so quiet when I was around. And then when you started talking, I was like, oh my gosh, dude, I love this guy. We've got Johnny Tuesday in the studio today. Thank you, sir. Oh. Yeah, once I start going, it's, uh, that's why I don't talk much. It's just never just blah, blah, blah. And uh, well, Johnny is like a man of many talents. He's, uh, you kind of just worm your way through everywhere. <laughs> you, you, He's very wormy. You know, one of my favorite memories of you was uh, the broken saddle. What was it, probably six months ago? You were so shit faced, and the, when the snot came out of your nose and you massaged it into the microphone, oh. it was one. It, I mean, I was in tears. Glad I don't remember that. Oh man, I, I just wish I would have recorded it so you could see it because it was a great yeah, spectacle. Proud moment for the clip reel. Like. <laughs> yeah, from the outside looking in on that one. Yeah, I mean, I've had I've had my moments where I don't want to watch it back, but man. it's good to know that was so we can never do that again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, but uh man, uh and if you are all listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Castbox, you or uh, we are also available on YouTube. Please leave a comment, um leave a review and yeah, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. You can hit it now. Are you looking for the nap? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm looking <laughs> oh, for, you're looking for look the blue. The, ca like the cameras. Where do I look into oh. to where I'm like, like there it is right there up top. It's it's just hidden up there in the darkness. But man, we're we're gonna talk about a bunch of stuff. But I guess like one of the very first uh things that I kind of want to talk to you about is you have seen thousands on top of thousands of comedy sets. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Johnny Tuesday is sat up in the crow's nest working at the speakeasy, the sound and lights and all this stuff. So you, and, and also performing stand up yourself, you've seen thousands. And so I really, I'm curious to like pick your mind on what you see and think while you're up there, because a lot of people who are always like performing, they're not really paying as much attention because they're nervous about their set or they're coming down from the higher lows of their set. Yep. So like what, what – actually, here's my first – let's make it more direct. What was the greatest set that you've ever watched? Like Ooh. but not like a professional comedian, like in this in this setting. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, like an open God, mic. so many good ones, but the best set. Whew. That's a tough call. Um, I would have to have like a top ten almost. Like uh, – and it would just be comedians who I would – you don't know their set. I've seen it, but they had those nights where the audience was just so in tune. Everybody was 
rolling through. And just like the electricity of it, like, it's, you know, a lot of people talk about it as like the special moment, like on stage. Yeah. yeah. And there, there's been, there's been a couple, I mean, like I've, I've got to watch a couple, like what seems to be really special ones for people. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple that were really special for me on stage. I, I, I'm, I'm so curious. Well, okay. So what would you, okay. You don't even need to say the person's name, but what was the worst bomb set that you've ever seen? Um, seen a few of those too. It was, uh, definitely speakeasy. Um, but it was again, like, there's a certain vibe that like kind of takes over a crowd effervescence. Once like a couple comedians start to go down now, like they lose the audience and the audience just starts, you know, jabbering or whatever. And they don't pay as much attention to the rest of the comedians following them. Mm -hmm. And a good host or a good whoever can kind of flip that, turn it around. But once it happens some nights and it doesn't get turned around, it's just a crushing night for everybody. And uh, I can't think of like one in particular recently, but I've seen that a couple of times and it's just destroyed. Like, oh. <laughs> he, what, one day that I think about is like, if you were to picture, you know, like when um, you were a kid or possibly when you were an adult, like that night when you were had the snot. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, when you were a kid, like you'd like had the goober in your mouth and you like let it hang out and then you go, you know, you like suck it back into your mouth real fast. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, that's what happened tonight. The guy who dropped the end bomb over and over again. Mm. I mean, like I, I was coming There's out of the couple. bathroom, and then like James Draper was standing over beside me, and it literally felt like that. Just this, just like the air of the room just completely left, and it was just we were just left Vacuum in shock. Boom. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a. Whoo. There's no real recovering. Uh. <laughs> from the, the energy once the energy is <laughs> cut in half like that it's, yeah um, who now who would you say in the in the time that you've watched who would you say has improved the most like start to finish it and it can be like somebody new it could be julian julian yeah and, yep. he, and he really is and he's he's getting his like uh his due like right now because he's doing well at a lot of shows and actually brad uh just in his third or fourth time up but uh, really impressed when he did that last open mic. Yeah, like, I was uh, impressed the way he flipped a switch a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It came in, came out hot. And so did Christian, man. He, uh, who for his first time, he's on fire. Yeah, it was but, good. I love the way Christian handled when Brad rudely interrupted him. Um, first of all, it was so fucking funny. Um, yeah, he well, it was just something about banging his mom or something like that. And, and but Christian, like, he let... He let the laughs come and he just sat there and waited till it was over. And what a great move. And what I told him after is he like, I could, I think maybe he thought there was one of two ways that it was perceived, but all I ever say is if there's laughs while you're on stage, whether it's by something you said or something somebody else said, and you work it, if you can work into it, he played into it perfectly. So those laughs. Sorry, Brad, but those are Christian's laughs. I mean, it was his joke. You riffed off of it, but man, and he handled it great. Brad was great with like the, um, with the playfulness of his set, like the voices. And, um, and honestly, the more and more he gets comfortable to toss that clipboard aside, he's gonna, he's gonna do better and better. He's better than me. Yeah. And it's so cool that me and him get like, uh, that we've put together this stuff at Yoshi's and, you know, me and him have put in so much work, you know, like to, to run all these shows and it would be, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, uh, uh, Johnny Tuesday puts on the shows at Yoshi's. Let's make that very clear. Best, I have I'm best behind the scenes in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> observing. Shadow work. That's but uh but uh i mean listen i'll take my free publicity <laughs> yeah, it wasn't right. fair <laughs> it's weird how uh, a lot of the time you'll find mistakes end up working in your favor their blessings on the skies with the right uh hmm. you never know no it was just it was just a mess up it was just a mess up it'll get corrected and we'll but yeah. as long as we, i mean as long as i really like that out there man and as as long as you guys can he's, keep bringing more keep people it. yeah like that is uh it's a good it's a good space. Like a lot of times when people do stand up outside or it's an outdoor show, mm -hmm. you're worried about people walking by. You're worried about a kid hearing you talk about cum or something like that. Yeah. You know, you 
whatever it may be, but that has a really nice energy to it. And the way you can kind of pack people in and make it more of like a hallway type scene like the speakeasy-ish, you know, where it's directly in front of you, not all the way here and spread out, but it's right down the lane. Yeah. So, okay, now – when did you actually start doing stand up? Then did you just like pop it? I, I know you just kind of pop in every once in a while. It's not yeah. you're not like I've been doing that for years too. Like the very first one I did was uh, Andrew King back in the day was hosting the Biter Bombs uh, up above Boozies over in Davenport, and uh, oh, I, I did fucking and I bombed. <laughs> it was bad, but uh, that's you know pretty common for a lot of first comedian sets. That was probably about. Uh, Five, six years ago, maybe. Something like that. Does bombing bug you? Not anymore. I couldn't really perceive, like, see it bugging you. I, I, but It's, uh, I don't know, part of the process. It's like, uh, you got to have those nights to know what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time, it's better not to know what not to do rather than what to do. And it's like, I know for me, at least. I, I, and I think, of, I think about it, too. Like, it's one of the most difficult sports to perfect because – you know, if you're Tom Brady and you run, have your wide receiver run this route and you make this throw, oh, I mean, every time it, it's, pro- it's probably going to work, you know, like if, if, but man, in stand up, you can do everything perfect and everything just go wrong a night. Even, cool. even if you do the same exact set, the same exact way. I've seen it a hundred times. It's amazing how that same exact set will, just depending on the audience, depending on the venue, the energy in the crowd will either. I'll have them rolling, or it'll just be crickets. That blows my mind. Like, but I get it. It's all comedy is subjective. It's not uh, anything uh, anybody can really pin down and, and say, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is. Uh, but. but with like energy in the room, too, especially for all this, like all the times you've been sitting up top and, and watching that, to feel it come back or feel it being sucked out of the room. And <laughs> it's wild to watch it from, uh, yeah, bird's eye perspective. Like, uh, cause you can see it happens. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it just drains out of them. But the right music, it can be uh, injected back into them sometimes too. It's almost uh, I've seen that a couple times too with different types of music. Like I'll switch it up, and you can just hear the gradual noise and the audience build and build and build. And <laughs> it's wild how much that affects people without even uh, really considering. And well, oh, oh, see, I thought. I mean, I've made it very clear at this point, but Todd Wilhite was such a great host because okay. he could like suck the energy. He, <laughs> somebody could walk up off stage completely suck mm-hmm. and then him just redirect the entire room. I, I, I really hope, I really hope he gets a chance to do more with his stand up because he deserves it, man. He, and, and the way he, he I mean, he, he doesn't stop writing. It's not like, Hey, I've got, this 30 minutes that's worked for years, it's, I've got, he's got something new that's almost, true. most all the time. He was always doing uh, new stuff. He was always great at fucking riffing with an audience, uh, audience crowd work. Um, but yeah, he was always doing new stuff. Uh, always trying to experiment, do something new, at least something that was hit, something that was trending, which uh, a lot of comedians, they do. They kind of get stuck in uh, this is works and it's safe and we know it's going to gonna work and shit, I've done that plenty of times too, where it's. Certain ones, you know, you got to get a laugh. You always want to end on a laugh, at least for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's not good to get uh, stagnant, I guess, at some point. Even if you know it works, you still got to keep building that repertoire of, you know, the whole uh, playlist, joke book, whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, that was suck. That was a kind of fun thing. Uh, so um, the show at Yoshi's the other day, I was honestly going just to watch Christian, and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna write some new jokes and just walk up there with. Uh-huh. You know, it was eight, seven, eight new jokes and walked up and then I found real premise on some of those jokes. And I, I could see that some of those jokes ha- have some really, really good potential to be worked on. That was yeah. awesome. That was really cool. I pushed out. Yeah. <laughs> well, a, a little bit, a if, little bit. But uh, if I'm not feeling it, I mean, I know I should force myself up there, do some shit, even if uh, I'm not feeling it. But uh, I don't know. When I get those certain nights, it's like if I'm not... Uh, if I know I'm not in the right headspace to do shit, I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to inflict that on an audience. Yeah, but that, that's good for you. that's good for you to know that about yourself too, though. You know, some people would. I mean, if they are just pissed off or in the most awful mood, they're gonna walk up on stage and you're gonna be able to see that yeah. right away. You feel it quickly. 
quickly, I, but I don't know. I, so what did when you when you started? Okay, so uh, I would say I don't want to say right after high school, but as you're a young adult, mm. what where where what was your dreams? What do you want to do? What what do you want to do? Like where do you? I never really considered that before. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I mean, I thought about it a couple of times. I've wanted a lot of different things at a lot of different points in my life where, uh, you know, I thought maybe having a family, having a wife and kids and stuff like that would be cool. Um, I've thought uh, building a little uh, show production type of thing would be cool where I go around, like, uh, connect art community, theater community, all the different people together into uh, a production business of some sort would be fun. Um, I've loved doing, you know, lights and sound and stuff forever. I'm trying to figure, basically, I'm just trying to experiment, find as much things as I can, uh, I don't know, that I vibe with, if uh, that makes sense, and, it, and try to figure out, uh, what that dream is, because I don't have any one particular dream that I want, but I do want to, uh, hopefully figure what, figure out one, one day, I guess. <laughs> no, that's, but that's, not every, n nobody's life is this cookie cutter like that anybody thinks that it is yeah. a lot of people get mistaken with like looking at other people and thinking well i should be here or this i, I wanted to do this why didn't i pursue this well that's all part of the journey of how we get to where we want to be and cool. and sometimes dude sometimes we get kicked in the nuts just over and over again in our lives and and some people hide it like some some people you will never even see it that they've Berger. been kicked in the nuts over and over again but that's because they have this determined like face behind the ma the mask, I guess. It's kind of like you know how Robin Williams, everybody talks about now, is the and Chris Farley. The happiest people are the ones that hurt the most and stuff like that. Yeah. It's it's this mask that we wear sometimes. But it, I, I would rather laugh about stuff than cry about it or be angry about it. Ultimately, that's why I think a lot of people use humor as a self defense mechanism and stuff like that to uh, thwart off the shitty emotions that we don't want to deal with or at least some not to, it's definitely not the case you know all the time because it's a lot of fun as well but i think that's a common thing for a lot of comedians because uh there's uh they're some of the best and but some of the most depressed people a lot of the time too it's amazing how uh i guess it's the the duality the polarity of uh however high you can go that's how low you might end up going to and I see with my history and past of like anxiety, depression and my suicide stuff and all that, mm. um, when I was at rock bottom, like there was only a couple people who could have even remotely as seen. Um, and then it, then I, I mean, for a certain couple people who saved my life, that's, uh, oh, yeah. you know, I've but, a uh, of those people. Like, yeah. <laughs> but like, I felt like, um, after that moment, and then there were some other things that I did, some maintenance on, on my life as well, you know, talking about a lot of the things that fucked me up as I was growing up and a lot of the things that, uh, you know, really were holding me back. Mm -hmm. I learned that actually being emotional helps me a lot. Like, I'm not afraid to, like, look at my friend in the eye and be so sad and cry or, like, like something's wrong and feel those – like, I don't need to put on this act of how I'm feeling. Like, totally. and, you know, if I'm, if I'm mad, if I'm mad – I, 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 the very first thing I do is I sit back and think what, what what's going on? What is this person feel thinking and thinking and feeling? And what am I actually thinking and feeling? And then let's try to match that to see if we can have a conversation to figure out where we're both at. Mm. Um, but then also sometimes, but if I'm just mad or you did something dumb, I'm going to make, it's going to be clear. It's got to be clear because yeah. people waste so much time and so much energy with, being so upset about things for so long and it, and it can be stopped that it, it can be that easy, especially with honesty too. Like yep. it's a, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing. And when you care about people, you should say and think what you feel. Yeah. It's a, it's a difficult thing though, to express that stuff sometimes. Uh, Cause just the way we live, the society <laughs> we live like a, it uh, is perceived as being weak sometimes to admit a mistake, but uh, it really should be just the opposite. I mean, it's acknowledging that we all make mistakes and, I don't know, moving past it, learning from it. I've never met a perfect person in my whole life. <laughs> I've, met, uh, I've met a lot, but I can tell you I've met some people who I know that 
handle things that honestly, I, I do know some people that I really admire the way they handle confrontation or an issue, an argument or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, like Chris Starman's one. Chris Starman, at the end of the conversation, whether you're fighting and arguing and bickering, whatever, you know exactly what his stance is or what he was thinking and feeling and why he was saying it. He will it. have communicated his – he will know it. So that's a refreshing. That's why I love that, man. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. Like, I mean, even when he's, like, feeling upset, he'll just be like, you know, I'm just I'm, – he just says, you know, I'm just feeling upset or I don't want to go out to stand up tonight because I just – I think I need a, a day off from it rather than people telling these little white lies. And I was notorious for that. You know, like, oh, my too. dog got out. Uh, I can't make it. And my dog's happily sitting inside or whatever. But oh, or I've got this to do or this came up. or you know, And I would I would say it over and over. And actually talking to Dana, he was something like that really helped me stop that as well because I could see that I do it. And it wasn't like egregious. Nothing was egregious. And it wouldn't no even. malicious. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's almost a time saver sometimes because it takes more energy to go through and uh, explain the truth than a little white lie like that. Even though it's uh, you're not doing it to be malicious, but in the end it is, uh, I don't know, is it uh, immoral or unethical? I don't know what the... It, it it weighs heavier at the end. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like uh, you throw you throw a pebble in your backpack as you're going on this hike. And the more and more you tell those little white lies, they turn it, they're, they're heavy like bricks. Oh and then, yeah, like then they're boulders. And then, but you've done it so much that you're just like, and then you can't remember, like, oh shit, why was I not supposed to be at the speakeasy yesterday? You know? Mm. But all of a sudden, your sister was rolling the rock up a hill forever for no reason. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I, I don't know, man. I see, I, I think that you. I, I've been very vocal with you about this because there's been a lot of times and a lot of conversations that we've had where you sit back and you really think about things very deeply. And, and you kind I mean, even if you don't say that much in the midst of the conversation, I see the way you take in, like you're listening and observing the way people talk. And I think that's a really, really good quality. Honestly, it's like a quality, like of a, of a psychiatrist. Or a therapist, you know, like someone who just takes it all in and they just sit there and, and then they think. So we were mentioning Pigpen earlier. Um, you familiar with the how they had that psychiatrist booth uh, set up in that show for five cents? And nickel? <laughs> yep. Uh, I went and built one one day. Um, I just basically started setting it up on street corners and giving people nickel psychiatry just to see what would happen. Uh -huh. I tested it out on a few different street corners, um, west end of Davenport and over like in front of Theo's in Rock Island. And I had some of the most amazing conversations with random strangers just coming by, giving me a nickel. And uh, they'd talk about their life. Like, they told me some stories about uh, their suicide, their addictions, their hustle abuse. Their uh, just really heavy shit to a random stranger on a corner for a nickel. It was like, uh, it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Like, that was probably, I don't know, also like five, six years ago, something like that. And uh, just the stories I heard from people and... Uh, they, a lot of them just, they were like, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Because they needed to get that shit off their chest. They needed somebody to tell to. And who better than a random stranger they're never going to see again. Like, it was cool. And so, and now th this is just because you wanted to do it. I thought it would be funny. D and, and did you like post? <laughs> it was did you, funny. <laughs> did you like post about it? And like tell, um, so did I did anybody a very, I fully dissected the uh, whole day. I kept very, uh, I don't know, detailed notes. And uh, I know Starman's got a couple pictures of me in the booth still. So I lost my old Facebook account. I don't know that shit's on there. Um, but yeah, I, I made a whole, I took it very seriously. And it was like, I didn't use any names and I didn't uh, use any because that's doctor patient confidentiality at that point. Mm -hmm. But uh, fake doctor it, patient confidentiality. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you can't have any HIPAA violations no, out no, there. No, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know there's still a few pictures floating me around, I think, in the photo booth. That was a fun ass time. Yeah, and that's that's wild because here here we go now fast uh, fast forward like six years and here you find yourself at another booth and you <laughs> and you're and you're staring down this bullseye and you just can't nail this bullseye as you got this clown just heckling you heckling you and you just keep throwing and throwing and it's <laughs> worth every penny <laughs> dude when you dinged dude, when you got it man i looked down the funniest thing 
about that. So I was in the um, dunk tank, and he came up, and he was just chucking, chucking, chucking. I spent a good 25, 30 minutes. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was pretty solid. For a good call. <laughs> and but when I went down, I went to the glass to kiss you, like kiss, and I had no idea until someone showed me the video that you kissed me under the water. Oh, of course. I couldn't see <laughs> that that water. Oh, oh okay. yeah, it was so murky. A lot of in there. had been dunked in there by then. Yeah, there was a lot of like Pubali has a, lo- a lot of uh, Egyptian oily skin in there, and uh, I was literally I couldn't There's figure a lot out. Of armpit hair there. There, oh, a lot of pubic Look hairs. Above it. There was pubic hairs this long in there. They were curly, <laughs> and I know who they belong to. <laughs> I felt so bad for her because she was sitting up there so, so cute, but like she's so cold. She was, yeah, because it was <laughs> earlier in the day. The clouds were still out, and, and I mean, I was That's so. I was so excited she got to get up in there because she was like, she's like, Shane, this is one of my dreams. I've always wanted to be in a dunk tank. Will you please get me in there? And I was like, I'll try. <laughs> yep, and it worked. Sold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's let's dive let's dive into a different area. If you had to be one <laughs> character from a movie, any movie ever, who would it be? Ooh, um, probably Dan Aykroyd and Blues Brothers. Okay, and you, see, I've never seen Blues Brothers. Um, I the, the only reason I knew, I mean, I, I of course I know the Chicago and the matching hats, mm. but uh, I mean, Brad gets mad at me when I said that I haven't seen that either. And but you can't see every movie. <laughs> but I I remember watching uh that guy's the guy who passed away, John Belushi. Yep. And his his son was Jim Belushi. He was a big Bears fan, and he had that TV show, that sitcom. Yeah, and then didn't he like? Have an aneurysm or is he? So alive? no, I think he is. No, I'm I, thinking of the other. Guy. Yeah. I I think something did happen to him. I I'm, I'm almost certain of it. Um, should I check it? Should I fact check it? What's his name? Jim Belushi. Jim Belushi. All right, let's see how fast. Come on, Jim Belushi is an American actor best known for Saturday Night Live. Um, he's still alive. Yeah, according to Jim is what that was called. According to Jim. Yeah, well, sitcoms, they're dead. Like, but, but, and honestly, when you kind of look back on them, aren't they kind of silly and foolish? Like, laugh now. (laughs) Like, laugh now. The laugh tracks are, uh, it's surreal now almost. (laughs) Like, we, we did that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It is so silly. Like, groan or be sad or say, aw. I mean, that is such a, that is such a weird thing. Um, it's almost a, Conditioning of uh, it, what to, how to respond to uh, this. I, I mean, it, it, it really. I mean, you're you're completely being told um, that this is your path to follow. Like, you know, I mean, even though you're sitting there, and it's a production. It is a production. I mean, I guess if if you're sitting there, but I get that. But if you have to ask for it, I, do you? I don't know. If you have to solicit it, is that genuine at that point? I mean, it's a. Uh, I like I like genuine more than fake any day. So yeah, I yeah, especially in like b- boobs. <sighs> oh totally. I mean, I love all the boobs. But, Me too. Uh, ideally, yeah, genuine, and it doesn't matter what size. I felt I felt one um, pair of fake boobs once, but they were they are like I mean I felt more than one, but they were <laughs> rock hard. Like oh, the, okay. they, like this was a this was a bad a job not well done. <laughs> a lot of drag queens boobs. Uh, yeah, they get the. Stiff ones. I don't know if that's silicone versus uh, it's not silicone. It's uh, what are the other one? Like, I think there's two main main I, boob job type of situations. It's it, 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 it's something. I know it's not rosin, but isn't it like something like like that? I I can't remember. Let's attach it's some Mod pictures Podge. of other Mod Podge. Yeah, yeah, Mod Podge. Mod Podge yeah, man, dude, <laughs> you, you stick your hand on those and they're not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, have you ever put a pair of pasties on? Um, no, I put eyeballs on my nipples because I'm the eyeball guy at the haunted house, but I'm um, working never, uh, never pasties. I mean, do you got any? Um, n- I don't, I mean, I have some, I mean, clearly there's some in this house somewhere. There's a pair right here, but, uh, like maybe later, yeah. I had put on, uh, it was on a uh, Mary show where I did the, uh, I did a burlesque routine after my stand up set. Um, this was a Mary show. Yeah. See, I can never. I'm always doing another show, so I can't get all the other shows. Like, I'd love to see. Oh, it was so much fun because I did really well with the stand up, and then I was like, 
you know, it's everybody's first time doing burlesque here. Should we add one more person? Okay. And the place went crazy. And I, man, I did oh, not cool. plan the routine okay. at all. <laughs> and it killed. It did great. And uh, it was so much fun. But after the show, I let um, this woman rip the pasties off me. Awful. How did that? Uh, no. Awful. <laughs> Awful. What were they held on? Like spirit gum or for the? Um, it was like super glow. Ooh. Yeah, I didn't know what I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I had. Yeah, it, yeah, they were glued on there. They and it hurt so bad. I was in tears. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah, um, but I was okay. So that is kind of what leads us into the next area where I wanted to go here. I do want to talk about Skellington, and I want to talk about some of, uh, um, some of like the hauntings and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. uh, first of all, you've been with Skell Skellington for um probably about probably also about five six years, I guess. Huh? And you've slept in Skellington. Yeah. That's an awful Don't decision. Come. Okay, so if you sleep in a certain room, apparently, or if uh, you generally sleep there, most of the people that have uh, have ended up with not good things happening to them or uh, having, uh, which you can't really account, you can't say that's the house, but uh, it's a weird coincidence that it happened to so many different people. Um, I have slept there a couple times, uh, not often. But if I'm just uh, super drunk and I happen to go crash there, maybe. Um, and I haven't really noticed anything. I think the spirits actually like me. But they, they, I was going to say, don't you have a story with like a woman who... The QC ghost tours, um, I think that's what they're called. They kind of go through the area. Um, they give little tours around uh, like downtown Rock Island. Um, I think downtown Tavenport maybe too, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But they uh, kind of travel around. They show people all the different historic sites and stuff. And uh, that used to be an old Masonic temple uh, at Skellington back in the day. Um, John Looney was like one of the original Rock Island gangsters, and he is like a cornerstone in that building. It's got a lot of history in it. Um, but they apparently this lady told me that some some older spirit, like a 60, 70-year-old male, real skinny old dude, uh, he said he approved of what I was doing, or he told her this. Like, and she was dead serious. Like, I, I'm still somewhat of a skeptic to some degree, but there's a lot of shit I can't explain that has happened, like, around, but I'm still fairly skeptical. But that lady kind of freaked me out. <laughs> because like, mm -hmm. she was just so... You, I knew she believed it. Like, uh, she wasn't bullshitting me. So uh, that kind of freaked me out, but it also kind of made me happy. It's like, okay, they approve of what I'm doing, whatever I, I must... Keep doing what I'm doing. I guess. If I got ghosts on my side, I, I don't want to piss them off. I've been kind of like similar in a way where like I'm I'm not I'm not ruling anything out. Mm -hmm. But then I've had I've had something happen that was truly unexplainable, and and there was multiple layers to how in depth this was. Mm -hmm. um, it started out we were. Have you ever heard of the Don Q N? It's got it's like a, a, a themed hotel rooms, but it's got a giant airplane outside of it, like Makokita around Makokita. Oh, uh, I think I know what I saw. Okay, so we went in there. We were on our way back from um, uh, Bayfield, Wisconsin, and uh, we were like, "Oh man, you know what? Our vacation was supposed to be over that day, but we're like, you know what? Let's just stay in one of these themed rooms, and this will be cool." And so we get a room, and this place is so creepy, like. Um, the chairs are like dentist chairs throughout the whole building. There's like saws on the wall, cool. um, like the handles, um, the handles on everything. You don't need to hide that. <laughs> well, I didn't Did want, you? I thought the noise, the, the liquid sounded like something. No, let's get up. some ASMR in here. Yeah, you're right, man. Um, we anyway, could have tickled ahead. somebody's son, like spine or whatever that's supposed to do. It. Oh, that's a nice <laughs> sound, dude. That was good. That was a good sound. Oh, man. Um. Ooh. At least it was empty. <laughs> you're just trying to make more sounds now at this point. I know what you're doing. I should have just turned anyway. I should have turned that mic on while you did it. Um but uh so we get this hotel room and we're like there's only two other people in the whole building. Cool. And so we get this uh casino room and we're like, you know what, let's go get a pizza, go get some dice and some cards, we'll play some games. Uh -huh. So we get back to the hotel room. Our hotel room was one twenty three. And we're like, okay, cool. And so we're she gets she gets in the hot tub. Oh, we ordered the pizza. We were waiting for the pizza, and we're in the hot tub and or like whirlpool thing in the room. Nice. And uh, there's like windows all the way, like or mirrors all the way around this hot tub thing. 
And I hear somebody knock on the door, and I'm like, that can't be the pizza guy already. I get all the way up out of the water, open the door, nobody there. I'm like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. And then we're sitting in there. We're like, I, I take a picture of our feet or whatever. And then we're like, have our eyes closed. And like, I look and I'm like, wow, dude, the room is like lit up. They had those big curtains, like the big, like, I don't know if it's not burlap, but it's like a really Heavy thick, thing. like, yeah, wool. like, okay. yeah. And so I was like. Maybe it was just open and it was cloudy outside, but the room was lit up and it was all red. And with all the mirrors, I mean, it was like illuminated red. Cool. And so I get out, I shut it, and I get back in. Hear the door knock, and it is the pizza guy now. And uh, we get the pizza, and I turn back around. Tim Reed, uh, goes to get out of the hot tub, and that curtain is moved back over. And I'm like, maybe it's just like sliding. And it was, it was weird. So we're sitting there eating the weird. pizza, and she says – Let's play Yahtzee. Let's just play Yahtzee first while we're eating. Mm-hmm. And so we take this table out and get these new dice out. And I'll, she goes, okay, because I, I didn't know how to play Yahtzee. She says, we're going to roll to see who goes first. Whoever's highest goes first. Mm-hmm. She rolls a six. I roll a six. She rolls a six. I roll a six. We get to 11, 12, and 13 <laughs> I was getting super weird about that. doubles in a row <laughs> without a broken streak. I would grab the, the dice by myself and I'd roll different numbers. But if we both rolled, it was a match each time. Whoa. And and I'm like, and so, uh, oh shit, in between that, uh, she was, when the pizza, I was putting it away, she was laying on the bed and I laid on the ground and took a picture of her. She was butt naked laying. What were you wearing? Um, I was wearing probably khakis. Okay, okay. Uh, um, I'm just trying to. <laughs> yeah. And so I like laid on the ground, but in front of the bed was a mirror. And then above the bed was mirrors. Cool. And took a couple pictures. Now we're rolling the dice, all these doubles. We're getting spooked the fuck out. Yeah. And then I'm like, something ain't right here. And I, and I, she and she's flipping the fuck out. She goes, if we roll another double, we're getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, I feel so creepy. Something's not right. We roll another double. We just paid $157 for this room, and we are packing up the bag. As I go to grab the door, the light, there was a cam light right in front of the door. It goes out. We go to leave. We take the key. We said we have a family. We said we have a family emergency. And the woman goes, will you be coming back? Never. No. So we're driving home. And – uh we're like so – we're like nervous. Like I'm getting goosebumps already because this is where this gets wild. Mm-hmm. I literally uh, start looking through the pictures on my phone. And I, dude, I'm telling you right now. So on the pictures on the phone, there's – I took two pictures. With the first picture of her laying on the bed and then there's this weird shadow. And then the second picture had the full – face structure of a man and i don't know how to explain it i cannot add up what it was that looked like that in the picture like maybe like a lamp and something else mashed together made it look like but it looked like a chin and a shadow and and a head and shoulders and everything like but it wasn't in the first picture but in the two pictures if if anything this first picture was here and this second i moved the camera this far the second time because i went like that. So it couldn't have been like the reflection or the, uh, you know, anything like that. So now we're on the way home and now we're looking at these pictures scared. Something's really, really wrong here. I send uh, I send this picture to like a handful of people. They're like, what the fuck is that? Like I blurred out Timory's ass out of the picture, but like – and they're like, wait, what the fuck? And so we, we hit exit 123 <laughs> where – the casino is, and we almost – we go off the road. We almost go all the way into a ditch. A semi ran us almost all the way off the road. Holy fuck. And so we get home, so and, and things are wrong. It's like and we, we get home, and the garage door, it just starts opening and closing on its own all the time. Like we're getting – like every time we walk in the house, it would open Brought back like up. Like an electromagnetic something with you. So <laughs> Tim Ree's parents, they, they live right across the street. And so they're telling us, like, you walked in and it just opened back up again. We pulled all the batteries out of all the, uh, like, automatic um, uh, opener, garage door openers. And now this was the final, this was like the final, because there was some weird things that we were kind of feeling, but we thought that maybe we were spooking ourselves too much. And um, now I I have, I had a deaf dog. She's passed away now at this point, but she got out. She was so fast. 
And so she ran right down the street to two houses away down the street here, two houses away. And I ran to get her and we were both going to work. So it was like, we need to hurry the fuck up. And so I've got, I've got Gabby in my arms and I'm walking back and Tim Reese standing there fucking talking to this woman. And I'm like pissed. Like I've got the dog. I'm getting covered in hair. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in my correctional officer uniform. And, uh, we get back to the, or I get back to the house. And I was like, babe, what the fuck? I was like, why were you t like, I'm down there. And she goes talking to who? The whole, what? the whole walk <laughs> back, I watched her in the street talking to the woman outside of our house. She was never there. She was never there. That's all I got. I don't know how to explain it, man. I don't know. There is some shit that you can't explain. Like, uh, once those moments happen to you, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> but where do you go from there? <laughs> like, holy shit. Yeah. It, it was a whirlwind of a, oh, was, and, and the last thing about it was, um, my phone had died. Uh, and like within two or three days, because we, there was people that had seen the picture. Cause I had sent that picture. I couldn't get access movie, to the pictures on my VHS phone. Movie. It emptied out my, my, like my phone was dead. It was completely fried and I did not have the pictures of it anymore. Cursed images. But I still have I still have people that remember seeing the picture though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking crazy, dude. I've never had uh I've only had one what I would call either a uh, supernatural, almost a religious like uh, type of experience. But uh otherwise I've heard about a bunch of people, but I've uh, only ever had one myself. It was like uh I don't know, a begin probably about 7 8 years ago. Um You ever done hallucinations? I have not. I highly recommend um, some of them. It's I, in the right I, setting, setting. I did dimethyltryptamine. I'm sorry. I did okay. DMT, and it was wild. Uh, yeah, that was a very long time ago. For whatever reason, that one doesn't seem to affect me. Like, oh, okay. I make a joke out of it, but it doesn't. Uh, I've tried it with many different people, many different uh, times and different methods. But uh, yeah, my yeah, my mine was it was is a wild experience. Like I was sitting there in the chair where I was, mm -hmm. and then I blinked. And then I was looking at myself sitting in the chair. Oh, and as I would raise like my arm, like I'm looking at myself raising my arm. Yeah. I blinked again and I didn't have skin or blood. <laughs> like it was just my your muscular skin. system sk almost to your, one of the systems. <laughs> and then I blinked again and you could just see my organs and bones. Like it was. Cool. And then the <laughs> second time I did it that night. I, I bl like bl did the same thing, like blinked and I saw something in the corner and like I blinked again and I was closer and it was this cobweb, but then I blinked again and I was so close. I could see like the particles that built it, like the dust in the air Dream landing on it. It, it. it was a weird one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Salvia is the weirdest drug I've ever done. Um, the most anti-addictive drug too. Like everybody will experiment with it for about two weeks and then yeah, they're done. Like uh, that sent me to a whole different dimension. Like, uh, Half of me, I remember the trip. It's super quick, usually, like uh, kind of DMT, too. It's just a quick couple-minute trip, and you're back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember pulling myself, like, out of this weird blue dimension where everything's blue. It's like a giant, huge halls, like, uh, they go on for fucking eternity. But everything's blue or different shades of blue. And I was sitting on my friend's couch. Actually, it was Grace's back, like, 10 years, 15 years ago, probably now. Actually, yeah, about 15 years ago. And I remember pulling my half of my body out from this dimension back on and like pulling myself back onto her couch again. <laughs> it was fucking woo. Yeah. Salvia is a very, very weird drug. I uh, recommend you try it for once and then never again. And, and, and how, where does salvia come from? It's uh, just a, I believe it's a Mexican like uh, plant. Uh, and they used to chew on it like Aztecs, if I remember right. Um, yeah. Get a trip. Like, uh, but this is the super concentrated stuff. You can buy it like co-op or, uh, uh, head shops, stuff like that. At least you used to be able to, I don't know the legal status now, but. Cause dim dimethyl tryptamine, that was, that's excreted in the pituitary gland. I, I believe, right? That's but, what uh, helps you dream. Allegedly. I'm, uh, I'm not quite sure. Like, uh, they say, yeah, that's secreted when you die, but, uh, from your, what, pineal gland. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know, I've never died, so I'm not sure. No, but uh, are you sure you have or haven't? See, I don't really know. I might still actually be on. This might be that very first DMT trip I took, and that's why I don't think it affected me. Like I'm still on it. Oh, and you're I will still eventually, there. Like snap back to that place one day. But. Whoa, dude! Wouldn't that be crazy? Yeah. 
That'd be or or I didn't like that, that place. I'd prefer to be here. That kind of uh, almost yeah, dude. This is great. Um, yeah, like, but uh, it, that almost sounds a little bit like Mandela effectus. You know, like yeah. you know, like that. You know, they say all this like the hydron collider uh, CERN and um, squirrel snuck in and fucked some shit up, or they created the God particle, and it's like they went and created a God. I was gonna be pissed about that, but if well, there is God. Yeah, I mean, but there's so many moments too. Like, dude, do you remember a time you fell out of, like, fell off your bike, or like a time Last where, you, or like mm-hmm. you got into a car accident, or a time where you fell out of a treehouse? Oh. What if every single time you just reset, like, instead, like, you didn't actually get up and proceed forward with your life, like, it ended, it split off into a whole different. Uh, it's called like quantum suicide, if I remember right, where you'll split off into a new dimension. Um, there's an actual term for that, yeah, like quantum suicide or something like that, where if you do end up either dying or killing yourself in a certain way, it, uh, they theorize it might shoot off into a fifth alternate dimension where, uh, you know, in that dimension you'll still be dead, but over here your consciousness still goes on and whatever you believe is going to end. But uh, see, see what, what the way I look at it, okay, so if you know how they like talk about um, like a, a parallel universe, but things like – Things are different. I yeah. see that. Sliders. You remember that show? Sliders? Yeah, back in the day. It was about. Uh, Is that about burgers? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> it sounds uh, so good uh, right now. It was about these four guys. Uh, one of them accidentally created like a wormhole jumping thing where they would slide from dimension to dimension. It's kind of like Quantum Leap type of thing. Uh, I don't know if you remember that. but uh, I've seen something like this. Oh, shit. They just keep jumping. Like the Golden Gate Bridge would be blue in this dimension. Be like, oh, we're not back to our home yet. And the whole show was them trying to get back to their original dimension. What is... Okay, so what would be like a show or like a storyline or type that you would think would be awesome to live? Like you could say something like Jurassic Park, man. That'd be <laughs> wild. Like do we have dinosaurs running around the streets? or what? Westworld. Best world? Westworld. Westworld. Okay, I've seen a little bit of that, but I is that an alien alien show? More uh, like artificial intelligence, uh, like creating, uh, yeah, creating an artificial intelligence within a artificial, uh, intel- like a meta world or a. Uh, Dude, I'm know, gonna. I don't even know. What it's I gotta write all these down. Sliders in Westworld. Uh, Sliders is classic, old school. Uh, like, shit, that's probably early '90s. I want to say, but. Uh, Fucking classic show, Quantum Leap. Oh, so that was where this guy jumped into, he would assume, like, the consciousness of people, and when they needed help, and he'd, like, suddenly... Well, kind of like Moon Knight. What's Moon Knight? Oh, dude. <laughs> Listen, gonna, you gotta I'm know, to I'm, write that one. I'm a Marvel geek, dude, <laughs> but uh, it's a, it's about a... a a guy he he's studying uh it's a it's a marvel it's part of the marvel series but it's new and and oh my god uh isaac oscar oscar isaac can't know because they're both first names um but he is so brilliant in this because he's playing two characters back and forth as himself cool um one is taking over inside of him and 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 they go Dr. Jekyll, mr hyde type of thing I'm like uh, oh but it is so but good I'm, but I'm it, yeah <laughs> it is so good one can right. fight the other one is um a nerd you know he's an yeah the duality of man it, it it is it is so awesome I would love to live in like uh, what would be like a like something amazing that would be oh uh, maybe like interstellar when they're when cool. they're in you know uh what did they what did they call it the interstellar when they make it to well actually didn't they name it after him uh McC- Matthew McConaughey's name in interstellar uh, they named it out of um, here after him um right. let's let's Matthew McConaughey. Little, little, Matthew all McConaughey. Right, all right, all right, station. <laughs> yeah, I just could. I could not say Matthew McConaughey. Interstellar. McConaughey. He played. What was his name? Oh my gosh! I know. I'm so close to thinking about it. Oh. I keep thinking these are mushrooms. Cooper. I just want to eat them. Cooper. Cooper. Uh, NASA pilot Cooper. No, Cooper. What? Cooper. I don't know who. Cares now at this DB point. Cooper parachuted out, stole all those millions, and hit him. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but oh, like, uh, you know, another one, Limitless, 
dude, people slept on that show. That was a great movie. The, I mean, the movie. I think the TV series that probably I mean, sucked, right? I, I think I started it. it. I, I want to say I saw the yeah, the first episode and I fell off. I mean, yeah, but I mean, Interstellar that would be cool because it would just be. Dude, there is so much to the world, you know? This is amazing. The vastness of the universe is insane. Like, when, especially now, we just got the new pictures from the uh, James Webb telescope, like, getting the whole new layer of textures on this simulation. It's awesome. <laughs> and I think about how insane it is, how much we all really truly mean nothing. <laughs> like, it is so mind blowing how. The sheer insignificant that, uh, yeah, <laughs> I love it because it does in the end come all the way back around and circle around to where it does mean like even though we're that insignificant we can still have that much effect as our own selves just this little fucking moments we make but. yeah and, and it is like i mean in the history of time and space in the universe dude not nothing about the universe gives a flying fuck about adolf hitler nothing about the universe gives a flying fuck about atomic bombs or about John Wayne Gacy or about, you know, Biden and Trump or, exactly. but it's crazy how much like people can mean to us, yeah. like how, how these little moments in these friendships or relationships or family, how much they can mean. They're their own whole little universes. Yeah. And the microcosms of the macrocosm. And, and, and I, and who knows? I mean, who, the, the probability of the amount of life and species and stuff that I would th foresee. I mean, it's so vast. I mean, it's so, they would, a million, million, million different types. Dude, there's, we are, I would say we're like gnats compared to what is probably out there. That's, that's a big reason why aliens probably haven't like contacted us. It's like, we're so, who low wants to on go pick up chain. a gnat? It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, we'll, uh, we'll let them do their own little thing on earth. Like, <laughs> we got, you know, big kids. Like, yeah, like, dude, they're like, well, we could grab one of them and like put them on our fishing we'll pole. Do a quick probe down with them. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, we're just a little worm. Yeah, we're a little science experiment. And that's <laughs> something that I thought about actually at a super young age. I said that in a science class and um, my teacher was super mad at me for saying it. I was like, but what if we're like an ant farm? I was like, what if we're just like an ant farm or, or like a science project where you like, you know how that we build a, like a volcano mm -hmm. and you erupt it. Um, or like a little ecosystem with like the plants and stuff. What if, what if like the, these creatures that we can't even see because we're too dumb are like, okay, let's give a big storm this way because the way our planet actually works with the wind, um, and it, like it's the force field that we have. The reason that we don't, we should be dead. We should all be dead from uh solar Radiation. flares. It, like the solar flares are so powerful that they should literally take out everything around earth but they don't because we have some weird force field around earth and it goes around a little bit sprinkles through that's why we may have weird internet and stuff when uh, when they do come but i mean they were, ah. it's wild to think of the things that had to line up perfectly for us to be here right now. <laughs> like in the grand scheme of things it is uh it's amazing and and me and maybe it's all Maybe it's all part of a perfect story, a perfect plan, a perfect th – th this this perfect idea. It was all created just to be all this. Like there is no answer to anything. The, the answer is that anything can happen at any time and – It has to. And there's so much out there. There's so much knowledge to be obtained that will never – no one could ever do it. And now this is a question I wanted to make sure I asked you. Mm -hmm. If you could be, and I know, I, I honestly truly believe, I think I know your answer. If you could be put on a rocket ship and be told that this is going to be safe, you are going to go at the speed, whatever speed you want, in whatever which direction you want, and you can stop anywhere. You have endless fuel. The only thing is you can't ever contact anybody and you can't ever come back. Um, and, but you could literally go yeah. anywhere. You would do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes it – my like, answer's uh, always been yes, too. Yeah. I'd want to see what's out there. Like, uh, I mean, I love here, but I know what's here. <laughs> like, uh, I would love to fucking uh, – I'm, although, I mean, I, am I just stuck by myself? Like, uh, it's just me. Y yes, but I have a stipulation. That's pretty lonely. Like, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty okay with myself. Like, I don't know. I'd be, I'd be but – 
I, do you do you honestly do you feel, what do you think it's all worth if like I mean if you get if you have nobody to share it with you have no one to share it with but what if you're sharing with wherever you get what if you That's find something too. and you're this you're this reason this oh uh, fucking alien you but. could you could be yeah dude i mean you are like what if like you show up and it's like a bunch of little yodas and they're, they're like it's johnny tuesday <laughs> jesus you know like i don't know why they're mexican <laughs> but see mike actually is an alien he rode them here <laughs> yeah he yeah, wanted tilapia <laughs> but um see i look at it a little bit different i mean my answer has changed now because i have children and a For wife sure. and like all that but but, I mean, I still can't break that thought. If I was to be told, so. now, here's my here's my stipulation. And I think that this this is what could – oh, man, it would be so hard. Um, but on this trip, I need one thing. I need everything that we know that's ever happened on this planet. I need everything that is – Real hard facts. I want videos, pictures, evidence. I want because then you could use that time of just taking in all of what everything actually is on this to understand what this is. And there are people who understand what this way more than it's ever been explained. Just like the richest people in the world, you have no idea who they are, you'll never know who they actually are. There's You've never went traveling through islands that people have never said exist. What about these temples and stuff in, you know, in the in the jungle? And but we don't know what what really is. I mean, they even say now the price of gold. It should gold is not um, a precious item. It's just an item. It's. I would love to. Uh... I would definitely love to explore on the condition that, yeah, definitely that I actually had access to the whole like compendium of uh, of uh, human knowledge that we've acquired, like a, the fucking Library of Alexandria that burned down. Uh, that equivalent of what we got today would be fucking awesome. But uh, also, the other stipulation I would put would be that whatever I like discover or learn along the way would be sent back to uh, to people to so hopefully they could you can't see do and learn, it. You Ooh, can't okay. do it. You can't. You can't so because that's the just, whole purpose of leaving. For me. Like, it's just, just for you. Just, and that's not uh, – well, what's the point then? If it's just for, like uh, – I mean – What is the point of life if it's not just for if you? If it's just for me. Like, uh, well, okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Man, it's a that's a it's a really tough in depth question, and there is no there is no real answer. True, but maybe you know, like maybe there's these aliens. They're just chilling, you know, and and this radio wave is sent out to them, and they're listening to this message right now, and they're like, which could be possible. <laughs> yeah, and it's like one of those one in a million, like a movie in the movie where they someone just finds this little piece of metal and it turns them into. Uh, you know, they have these superpowers that could be invisible. Uh, or... What was that John Travolta movie? Where it, uh, fucking, oh, Grease. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> he had those super Grease powers. <laughs> yeah, I'm just greasy as fuck. And, and then he can like... shoot lightning out of his hands, I, I remember, right? Yo. <laughs> yeah. Dude, and he Contact. had a... Contact. <laughs> That's what it was, I think. Contact. Alien uh, fucking beam, which actually several very famous writers over the years have had uh, insisted that they got hit with a beam from either the Sirius star system or some kind of star system... Uh, some kind of beam of knowledge injected all this crazy knowledge into their minds at some point, and uh, didn't necessarily give them superpowers, but made them uh, give them clarity, give them focus on uh, at least how to understand certain things. Which uh, could be bullshit, could be not. I don't really know because again, it's like I'm a skeptic, but I uh, there's a lot of weird shit that's happened that I can't deny. So yeah, and I mean to to think like what could possibly be out there when we haven't even. We don't even know. Um, we only know 10% of our ocean. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like uh, That blows my mind how we know more of outer space than we do our own home planet. <laughs> like, and, 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 the, and the fact that we, we presume what our, like the core of Earth is made out of, but we have absolutely no idea. Um, it's... Uh, it, they, uh, they just did some study. I think they're getting closer, but they ultimately it's all just you know guesswork and imaging and and, you know, and, and, and a heat sense yeah heat sensors and stuff like that. But what's beyond that? What if what if our, the core of our what if the core of Earth is actually 
a bl- like a black hole. Like what if what, like what if everything is pushed out of it and that's why everything is outside? What if the center of the universe universe is the core of our earth and we just don't understand why yet? That'd be wild. Yeah. Maybe we are all that there is. Maybe it all starts. Maybe the end all be all is starts. It does start here. And the the way this is all perfectly laid out for us is to map out the whole the whole universe and to populate the whole universe, create different species, species like maybe like maybe maybe the the dinosaurs and stuff, maybe they weren't all extinct. Maybe they just got sent all off and there were some that died back, but that's why we find bones they're, and stuff like they're that. They're up on Nibiru. Yeah, yeah the, the with planet. the Anunnaki. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh I mean, but what it, it it could very it could very well be because no one actually has a true answer to that. Is this band in in here? Or it, it it is, but we can do. Uh, actually, we've only got about ten minutes left. Are you are we okay for that? Oh yeah. Okay. No, I can. I'm not that much of a guy. No, um, we well, Mike and Draws <laughs> got it. He he got it banned. He got it, it banned because he didn't Mikey. stop. He didn't stop the whole time, and we went upstairs and I had, like it was. <laughs> Uh, he hot your whole house. Oh, my whole house. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know, man. I think that um, I think that we could really. I, I think that there's ways to think, but there's no actual way to really know anything. True, there isn't. Uh, we uh, ultimately, it's like what is it, solipsism or uh, sophistry? I can't remember. I'm getting too mixed up. Where we can't know really anything beyond our own minds. That's the belief of that. Like what we're perceiving and seeing, so uh, I don't know. I keep going back to that. Sometimes it's like, uh, is it all just a? Are we in the Matrix type of thing? Is this a simulation? Is it all just a, an illusion? Is it a Mandela effect? Am I still on a DMT trip? Ultimately, I know that uh, I know what I can feel. I know where I like uh, what I can feel, hear, and uh, smell with my you know senses and shit. And uh, I'm happy to be here. So I don't know. Uh, and and it's it, another thing I think is kind of neat to yep go ahead. Um, another thing I think that is kind of neat to look at is the way we've always changed and adapted, like human beings, like you, you, whether it be the the fifties or the eighteen hundreds or Roman times or like the way. Do you can you tell me that nobody ever sat there and looked at war where you just line up in front of each other, you all just have muskets and you just. Mm-hmm blast each other just to pile up dead bodies it's wild being so civil about killing each other <laughs> it's weird yeah dude where's the lunatics that are like you know with the ar-15s and shit you know like what if we only had more crazy people with guns. But, but but that's weird and i see see this is where i really stand with war not like that i don't like i, lo- I love our veterans and i love totally. you know the people that protect the country and everything like that but dude I couldn't I could never I could never do it because why am I going to go kill people that are just like me that just love their families and love their kids and the you know they they're just trying to do what's best for ultimately uh, their, yeah. uh, their families and you're just I, of course I of course so. you could want to kill uh, people who are killing and hurting and harming people and and destroying people's livelihoods and lives but dude just to sign up to sign up like there's a certain- to, to fight someone else's battle, I've always said this, like, whether it be Trump or Biden or whatever, our president, if we go to war, it should just be this. Our president has to fight like the this, other president. The Coast fight, like, they're straight up brawl, all right? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to, like, elect guys like The Rock and shit like that. <laughs> um, and we're going to be going up against, like, Thor Bjornsson, the mountain from Game of Thrones. But, uh, it, but it's... Um, I, I don't know. It just seems like you get signed up to just go fight someone else's battle. Like it seems futile. It seems like why, why am I fighting this motherfucker's fight? It's always the uh, the poor going to war for the fucking rich people. <sighs> Man, dude, I, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we could yeah, really get some education. You just gotta kill the people. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, you get your free. You get the free education. Yeah, just go ahead and machete off a couple people's arms or something. I don't. And I don't mean to reduce it to that. But no, uh, no, no. Yeah. And and like I said, I mean, I you like you know stuff like nine eleven happens and people like come together and they, you know they go to do this. But man, why are we doing this in the first place? Like. 
nobody's uh, – they don't usually get a moment, I think, to step back and think about that. And it always uh, rushes into, especially with war, it's like, okay, we got to have a quick response. We have to act, you know, brashly. We have to go be fucking violent and uh, do what we do. We'll be uh, fucking Team America. Fuck, yeah. And it's uh, that's stupid. I don't know. And that's life, baby. That's life. Right or is it? Last night. Or, or uh, is it life? Who <laughs> even knows? But, I'm, I, dude, let's wrap this thing up. You got to come back again. This is a fun-ass fucking hour and five. Yeah. Yeah, this is perfect. This is where we normally stop them. But like, dude, if I had if I had get you for a night where we're not we have no time crunch or worry about work or anything like that, the next day, dude, I am all the way in for doing this for like three Agreed. hours. This was awesome. No, we'll have a more in depth where we'll uh, we'll go over all the deeper aspects of reality next time, and we'll have people send in some questions and stuff like whatever cool. because we could just talk on it. Who cares? It doesn't mean we're right. Doesn't mean we're wrong. But uh, we'll it's explore. fun. It's fun to talk. Okay. This is Shot Thirty Podcast. I'm Shane Newbert. That's Johnny Tuesday. Um, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, July 29th coming up is Play Stupid Games, Win Stupid Prizes over at Yoshi's Filipino Bar and Canteen. Uh, it's going to be a little different type of format, uh, open mic, where it's a mixture of, hopefully, the music side of the open mics and the comedy side of the open mics, where uh, a lot of people have shows that night, so we uh, there's a lot of musicians, a lot of performers still looking to go do something, you know, perfect uh, work on their craft and stuff. So come on down 29th to that. Um, other than that, right now, that's all that's on the books. Okay. And so can you can, like, I can go there and play the flute? If uh, you want to play the flute, if you want to just, like, if you, this is your talent where you can do some armpit farting, um, whatever talents are welcome, come on down, and we'll, uh, you can play a stupid game, possibly win a very stupid prize. We'll have some Dickasaurus, 3D printed Dickasaurus printed up, uh, oh, yeah. which you might be interested in, uh, you know, we'll see. And uh, I, I may just play the skin flute on stage. Oh, I got to eat one of these quick before we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to eat one of these. <laughs> They're not the worst. They're not the worst. Actually, if you enjoy them, I mean, you could just take them. <laughs> Basically like pistachio or something. Yeah, it's, it's just, just a like, little uh, salty. Like grocer. You know? Yeah, except for when you're looking into the eyes of... You know, you know, we're talking about war and all this shit. Look, at, I literally have a bag full of minnows that war. their lives all sacrificed for war me. Never changes. Dude, it doesn't. <laughs> I got a pot of Talk about letting the bodies hit the floor, bro. <laughs> I don't. Okay. Yeah, there's a acquired. Okay. Yeah, there's a little follow-up to it. But this is Shot 30 Podcast. Uh, Shot 30 Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, CastBox, YouTube, all those things. Please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. They may like it, they may not. But And we will catch Johnny Tuesday back on the show soon. Woo! Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.